kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. Welcome to Veggie Tales. Now Larry won't be with us today. He's helping out some kids at a toy drive. He agreed to volunteer his time to help kids who normally don't have much, and I think that's great. God loves it when we help others. Now Larry thought you might miss him, so he asked me to introduce you to his special friend. Hello, I am Lutfi, the kindly teensy wincy cucumber. Well, hi, Lutfi. Do you want to say hi to the kids? Oh, yes. Hello, children. I am friendly and I am kind. And I am teensy wincy. That's right. And since Larry's away, you're going to help with the show. Right, Lutfi? Oh, yes. Even though I am teensy wincy, I can be a great big helper. Well, let's get started. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, will you excuse me for a moment? Cover me, Luffy. Um. Hello? La da da da! Hi, Larry. I was just talking about you. We just started the show. Here, well, let me put you on speaker. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Who is helping? It is I, Luffy, the kindly teensy weensy cucumber. Oh, hi, Luffy. You may be teensy weensy, but you're a great big helper, aren't you? Indeed, I am. Larry, I was just telling the kids about your volunteer work. We're proud of you, buddy. That's a great thing you're doing. God likes it when we... I'm not doing it. Uh, not doing what? I'm giving up, Bob. I'm coming home. This whole day has been a big mess. Huh? What happened? I didn't think it would be this hard. I got on the 151 bus and transferred to the 146, but I forgot to buy a transfer in the 151, so the bus driver wanted me to buy a whole new ticket. But I ran out of nickels. Uh, so he dropped me off like 12 blocks before I got to the 81 stop. So I hopped 7 blocks and got on the subway. But I was so tired from hopping that I fell asleep. But So that's where I am now, Bob. On a payphone at the end of the subway line. I'm giving up and coming home. You can't quit now. Perhaps Luffy can help. Not now, Luffy. Larry, just think of all the kids you can help today. And remember, you gave your word. You need to persevere. Yes, you need to... Luffy, let me handle this. What's that? What's what? What's persevere? Oh, well, uh, perseverance is just a big word that means to keep on keeping on, uh, even when it's hard. I know that quitting and coming home would be easier, but many things worth doing take hard work. Don't you want to be a finisher? Uh, yeah. I'm finished riding on the bus, and I'm finished hopping around the whole town. Luffy is a great big helper. Luffy knows his story. About perseverance? You do? Yes, a teensy weensy story. Uh, well, look, Larry, uh, maybe Luffy's story will help you out. I, I, I know you can't see, but uh, try and listen closely. Okay, but make it snappy. I'm down to my last three quarters and it's cold out here. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> Hang on. Oh! Hi, kids. I'm waiting for Larry. I've really missed him. He's been away at Danish Immersion Camp for the longest time. Thanks. Have a nice day. Surprise! Is that it? What, is what it? Is anybody else going to say surprise? Uh, no, Larry. It, it's just me. Oh. Well, you know, it's just that normally... There's a big group of people who pop up and say surprise at a surprise party. Well, everybody else is getting ready for the show. Oh, and it's a great one, Larry. You're going to love it. It's... What? Welcome in Hedgem, Larry. It's Welcome Home, Larry, in Danish. You should know that. How's that? You just spent the last three months in Danish immersion camp. Oh, yeah, well, I didn't exactly go to Danish immersion camp. What? Well, I did. Kinda. I mean, I was there for a day, and then me and this kid, Bjorn, took a canoe ride out on the lake and got lost. We ended up at another camp. What camp was that? Overdone British Literary Adaptations Camp. Uh, over what? Overdone British Literary Adaptations Camp. But, but Larry, you were supposed to learn Danish. We were going to do a show about a Danish trucker and his trusty pet monkey. <gasps> like BJ and the Bear? In Danish? Sounds fun. Yes. It does! Except now we can't do it because you can't be Jorgen because you don't know Danish! Who's Jorgen? The trucker! Who's the monkey? Well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? Oh, man! Now what am I gonna tell Chester? Is that the monkey? No, 
Oh, it's the kid we got the letter from that we were gonna do the show for. Well, what's his problem? Here, read this. Having heard his wondering, Bob the tomato enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in a towel, Bob regains his composure and confesses. Larry, that old hairbrush of yours. Well, you never use it. You don't really need it, so... Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know. But I gave it to the peach, because he's got hair. Oh, dear. Oh, dear is right. The same thing happened to Jorgen and his monkey. But Jorgen decided to take a canoe ride and get lost in overdone British literary adaptation camp. But weirder by far than its color or height is what happens there every fourth Tuesday night. As strange as it seems, it has been demonstrated that snoodles aren't born, but rather created. Uh, as I was saying... You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Song is gonna take a look. <clears throat> Let's see if Quirty has a verse for us today. Love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19.18. Now that means we should treat others just as nicely as we want to be treated. Oh, look at the time. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Uh, you guys gonna start that story? That was a silent movie. But powerful! How's he supposed to know what happened? He's on the phone! Oh, I did not think of that. Uh, look, Larry, uh, we're gonna have to try this again. Hold on for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go grab another story. With sound. I'm down to two quarters, Bob. I'm hurrying! Cover me, Lutfi. <laughs> I'm Bob, I'm a tomato, and I need your help. Whoa, deja vu. Um, what's he got on his space helmet? Huh? What do you mean? Larry! What? How many times have I told you not to eat while you're wearing your helmet? Do you remember when we learned about forgiveness? Oh my goodness, how could I forget? Well, do you think the kids at home would like to hear about it? Oh, most definitely. You would, wouldn't you? What'd they say? Um, I don't know. I think they said yes. Okay, great. Well, should I tell them or, or should you? Oh, go ahead. All right. Well, it all happened one summer while Larry and I were running a tour boat service. Yeah, you see, we had this boat, and we take some people, and we put them on the boat, and then we give them right way out on the ocean. You see? <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> We need your help, Junior. Our starship, the USS Apple Pies, is in grave danger. Oh, really? Tell me more. In just eight minutes, the ship and its crew will be smashed to bits by a giant meteor. Good heavens. Well, can't you just move the ship out of the way? That's just it. The Apple Pies is completely without power. Dead in the water. She can't budge an inch. Ah! Commander Pablo has come to congratulate Captain Larry for his bravery. Hey, Larry, we're making snow cones back there. Do you want peach or strawberry? Um, not now, Bob. First, I have to smash through this iceberg and free some whales. There are no icebergs around here. Oh, yeah? Well, what do you call that? Well, Larry, what'd you think? Are you ready to persevere and keep on keeping on to the toy drive? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Larry? Larry? Oh, no. No time for chit-chat. Junior, only you can save the apple pies. Lieutenant Larry, the shrinker beam. I like him, Bob. Uh, I think my helmet's on backwards. Thank you. As Larry said, we had a boat and we would give people rides on the ocean. But I remember that day, that fateful trip. Why, yes, it started from that tropic port aboard our tiny ship. Now, Larry, he was a mighty sailor man. And Bob, he was brave and sure. And, uh, weren't there five passengers who'd booked that day on our three-hour tour? Ah, uh, yes. 
our three-hour tour. Okay, let's see. There was the professor, and we were there. Well, yeah. And, uh, the millionaire. Um, and his wife. Mm-hmm. And wasn't there a movie star and, um, that other girl? Yeah, but they canceled. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, funny you should mention it. Our sensors have just determined that the meteor is made entirely out of... What? Out of what? Popcorn! <gasps> a popcorn ball meteor. The worst kind. Well, anyway, there we were on our three-hour tour, doing our best to entertain the passengers. Some veggies went to see, 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 to see what they could see, see, see. But all that they could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue see, see, see. See? Yes, well, that was just dandy. But isn't it time we left the dock? <laughs> okay, fire up the engine first, mate Larry. Aye, aye, Skipper. Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, yes. Why, just smell that salt air. <sighs> Mighty nice. I think I'll go back and see how our passengers are doing. Can you take over here? No problem, Skipper. It's a big responsibility. You won't daydream, will ya? Don't worry about a thing. I got you covered. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, we're all pretty different. Some are skinny, some are stout. But the inside is the part that we're supposed to care about. Aye, that's where we got feelings that are very much the same. And so instead of weirdo, I think friends are better names. Yes, we most certainly had an accident, and I think someone has some explaining to do. What? What is it now? Um, well... Lieutenant Larry here dropped our map right out of the spaceship. Sorry. And, uh, we were wondering if you could just give us directions to the freeway? I think we can make it from there. Out the window, down the street, and left at Mr. Slushy. Great. Thanks. That's what I said. I said left at Mr. Slushy. Oh, no. You said right. I distinctly remember you saying right at Mr. Slushy. Why would I say that? That'd be... that'd be crazy. I'm kind of thirsty. Can we stop at Mr. Slushy? No. We need that money for tolls. <laughs> He must have run out of quarters. I sure hope he... Hi, Bob. Larry, you're back! Yep, here I am. Well, what about the kids? I don't know how much of the story you heard, but it was... I pretty, pretty much heard the whole thing. Ran out of quarters right near the end. But I had a great time with the kids, Bob. I helped give away toys, and we had sandwiches, took pictures. You should have seen the look on their faces. It was so cool. <laughs> when I heard the busy signal, I thought you'd given up. Nope. I got right back on the subway, got up at the 81 bus, took that to the 49, grabbed a burrito, got on the 92, hopped three more blocks, and I was there. Wow, sounds complicated. But worth it. Well, what do you say we talk about what we learned today? Gee, it's kind of nice out here. Maybe this isn't so bad after all. Huh, Bob? Not so bad? What do you mean, not so bad? Our boat is at the bottom of the ocean, and we're stuck on this island, in the middle of nowhere, with no way to get home. I said I was sorry. At least you could forgive me. Well, it's just that we're... Well, can't you see we're... I just... I just... Can't. Oh, I said I was sorry. Well, that's just not good enough. Good night. Hello, people! 
Have you seen Larry? Oh, look, Lovey, it's the skipper. Oh, I didn't know tomatoes grew on trees. Well, actually... Oh, never mind. Hmm. A skipper, what are you doing up there? I'm looking for Larry. When I woke up this morning, he was gone. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. Bell has a lot to say in his book. Oh dear. Look what you've done to our house. You bonked me on the head with a coconut. Wow, I did not mean to do that. I am so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Well, I guess it was an accident and you did say you were sorry, so I forgive you. Thanks. I'm really sorry about your house. I'd be glad to help you fix it if you want me to. Do you think you could forgive me? We know you didn't mean to do it, so so we'll forgive you. Oh, thanks. Gee, it sure does feel good to be forgiven when you make mistakes. Yes, sir. Boy, if I said I was sorry for doing something wrong and, and really meant it, and people still wouldn't forgive me, I'd feel just terrible. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, Larry said he was sorry for smashing the boat. And that was just an accident, too. Just like when I hit you with that coconut. Or when you fell through their roof. And we wouldn't forgive Larry at all. So that's why he went away. He must feel terrible. We've got to find him. Oh, come on, everybody. I, I think he's over here, maybe. Larry! makes mistakes sometimes and it was wrong for us not to forgive you when you said you were sorry yeah yeah can you forgive us for not forgiving you um okay i forgive you guys uh, phew. Oh, good. wow bob did you make that story up yourself well, I, uh... That was great! You would have fit in great at camp. Well, I did go to overused literary emulation camp last summer. Oh, yeah! That's right across the road! There was something about that story, though, that made me want to eat green ham. Hmm, well, I, uh... uh anyway, we're over here by Cordy to talk about what we learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. And eggs. Eggs, too. What? Oh, uh... You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. You see, the little snoodle got weighed down by the pictures of him the others were painting. Just like the names people call us make us feel terrible. But just like the snoodles, we have a creator. God made us! And when we know what he thinks of us and how he sees us, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Cordy, can you tell us what the Bible says about us? <laughs> I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. So, Chester, the kids at school can only see the way you look right now. But God sees you the way you're meant to be. You're stronger, smarter, and braver than you think. And God has given you amazing gifts. You can use your gifts to make the people around you feel better and to do things for God that'll end up on his fridge. Do you know why? Oh, 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 I think I know, Bob. Because God made you special. And he loves you very much. Yep. And he wants you to paint, and he wants you to sing, and he wants you to soar. 
and maybe even dance. Well, say goodnight, Larry. Farvel. That's Danish for goodbye. Learned that one before the canoe ride. Right. Broccoli, celery, gotta be.